Chapter Thirty One of the Alps, the Danube, and the Near East. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Betty B. In Rumania's oil fields. Imagine hundreds of gigantic oil derricks, black toothpicks as tall as a ten story building, reared up on the plain. Back of them picture mighty mountains cutting the sky, and in front the grain laden lowlands through which the Danube is flowing to the sea. Between hills of black sand tossed up in all sorts of shapes, black oil is oozing out, forming black streams and pools. Here and there are clusters of round iron tanks fifty feet high, each holding tens of thousands of barrels of petroleum. Iron pipes of all sizes lie on the ground, and donkey engines are pumping and bailing. A myriad of dirty men and women are toiling away at all sorts of strange jobs. These are some of the features of the oil fields of Rumania, of which the town of Ploesti, where I am writing, is the center. Rumania holds sixth place among the great oil producers. She is now taking out almost two barrels of every hundred produced in the world, and the bulk of her output comes from this little region where I am today. The petroleum deposits lie in three zones. One is in Miramusesh, in the basin of the Tiza River. Another is in the Valsia district, but the most important is that of Prahova, which is within two hours by motor of Bucharest and on the southern hills of the Carpathian Mountains. Here, in a region ten miles wide and a hundred miles long, are something like one thousand oil wells, which are producing from seven to nine million barrels of oil a year. The oil is in great pools scattered throughout this strip. There are about ten fields the most important of which is the Mareni Twikani field, the one I describe here. It is a small territory, put it all together, and it would not cover more than four 100-acre farms. Nevertheless, it yields about 50% of Romania's production and is the great center of her oil activity today. The city of Ploesti is in the heart of the oil-producing territory. The fields run in a great semicircle round it, covering an area of perhaps 40 square miles, and the oil is piped here to be refined. There are a dozen or more refineries, the largest of which has a capacity of 20,000 barrels per day. You can see the tank farms on every side of the city, and the Swedish smell of petroleum fills the air. Of the more than 100 companies operating here, the Standard Oil has the best refinery. Its machinery is all new, for it was built after the World War. The oil formations of Romania are different from those of the United States. In America, the deposits lie mostly in rocky strata, so hard that the stone does not come up with the oil, and the crude petroleum readily flows out or is pumped to the surface. Here, the deposits are from 1,200 to 3,000 feet below the surface and are mixed with sand as fine as flour and with the natural gas that permeates the whole mass. When oil is struck, the gas forces the sand out with the petroleum. Sometimes for several hours, or even for days, nothing but sand will come, and then follows the mixture of oil and sand. Even after the wells have been producing for a long time, there is so much sand mixed with the oil that it is impossible to pump it. For this reason, when the wells stop flowing, the oil is taken out by baling, a long baling bucket, such as is used in making an artesian well, is lowered by electricity or steam into the well, allowed to fill with the oil and sand mixture, and then raised and emptied. The bucket is as big around as a quart measure and sometimes as high as a five-story house, so that it brings up several barrels at each dip. With a baler fifty feet long, as many as five hundred barrels of oil are thus raised in one day. Getting the oil out of the sand is a tough problem. From a flowing well there pours forth a hot mush, as thick as molasses, as black as ink, and loaded with these fine rock particles. The mass is run into a great vat half the size of a city lot, below which are a half dozen other tanks arranged in terraces. In the first vat, much of the sand sinks to the bottom before the oil passes on through holes an inch or so in diameter into the second vat. There, more sand is dropped and the product grows purer and purer as it flows on through vat after vat 
until at the last one it contains no sand at all and can be pumped off through pipes into the storage tanks as the black stuff issues from the well it deposits much sand around the edges this is scooped up by bare-legged barefooted women standing ankle deep and often calf deep in the hot slimy mixture and ladling it out with scoops into holes or little pits on the banks of the pool other girls lift the mush from these pools to pools just above the oil drains out as they do so and finally at the top of the line perhaps ten or fifteen feet above the great pool below women raise the now almost clean sand and empty it into a steel car in which it is carried away to the sand pile in the field i have been describing there were hundreds of derricks each over an oil well and here there and everywhere among them were veritable mountains of sand all of which had been lifted out in this way i asked about the wages of the girls who do most of the work in the oil fields and was told that they got fifteen cents for a working day of eight hours or less than two cents an hour for their back-breaking labor the men get more than the women drillers draw as much as seventy-five cents a day while the common laborer seldom receives more than twenty or thirty cents yet the cost of living is low and the people think they do well to get these wages their labor is nothing like so efficient as that of the unskilled workers of the united states the fact that the sand is mixed with the oil entails drilling difficulties that we do not have in the united states the sand is as sharp as the particles of a carborundum grindstone and cuts like diamond dust when a gusher is struck the mush-like mixture comes out with such force that it sometimes saws its way through iron and steel it will also spray over a large part of the surrounding country and it is for this reason that the derricks are not left open as in the united states but boarded in from top to bottom in order to break the force of the geyser of oil and sand a screen of steel rails is hung about twenty feet above the mouth of the whale alternate rails are inverted and the whole makes a solid steel ceiling but the oil sand flies against this in such a blast that it cuts right through the steel in the space of eight hours or less sometimes a cap of iron or a flow well weighing three tons is poised above the well yet the sand bites through it i stop now and then to watch the drilling on account of the sand the wells are never shot here with dynamite or other explosives as with us the drilling is further complicated by the different degrees of density of the various strata which cause the earth to slide in much the same way as it does along the panama canal this slipping forces the drill out of the perpendicular often to such an extent that a second hole must be put down or the bent drill cut through and the hole extended the soft earth formations add to the difficulty of putting down the casings in a deep well the pipe sunk at the top may be twenty-five inches in diameter or so big that a four hundred pound hog could crawl through it after some distance a smaller casing is run down from the top and the drilling continued the hole growing smaller and smaller until the casing that strikes the oil is perhaps so small that a cat could not run through it a queer feature of the Mareni field is a huge wedge of salt which runs east and west with the oil on two sides of it it is a mile or so wide at the point and broadens out as it extends from the hills to the plains the deposit goes down no one knows how far it has been drilled to a depth of more than a half mile from the surface yet the bottom has not been reached standing on the apex i could see the great black derricks forming long lines on the sides of the wedge somberness is a feature of the roumanian oil fields the pitchy black sand and the oil spray paint everything the color of jet the buildings are black the machinery is black and even the ground is of a rich dark hue in walking i had to watch my step lest i sink to my shoe tops in one of the oil swamps here and there i had to be especially careful as i had an appointment to lunch with the queen on the following day and had no other shoes than those on my feet among gold miners there is a common saying that the gold is where you find it it is much the same with oil 
for centuries petroleum has been mined in a small way in different parts of roumania it was first exploited commercially in eighteen fifty seven two years before the drake well was put down in the united states and opened the story of profitable oil production in america for a long time the wells were dug by hand and big basins about fifteen feet square and fifty feet deep were made to hold the oil in the beginning the diggers were not able to go below one hundred and fifty feet and as they went down they used to drop snow into the wells to purify the air at least they claimed this purified it later wells were sunk by hand to six or even eight hundred feet and the oil sands were washed in great wooden vessels half filled with water the water separated the sand from the oil which floated on the surface later still the oil was hauled out in wooden barrels by horses hitched to windlasses sometimes ox skins were used to raise the petroleum just as they are even now used in northern india to lift water for irrigation after the foreign drillers came in prospecting went on everywhere and new fields were discovered among those tested was this moreni field and that notwithstanding the advice of dr Narasik, the head of the geological institute of roumania the learned doctor said that there was so little chance of finding oil in moreni that he would agree to drink every quart taken out of the region nevertheless as i have said the moreni field is producing more than half the output of the whole country and it will yield this year something like four million barrels in closing this chapter i want to say a word or so about the standard oil company in roumania whose investments here amount to upwards of twenty million dollars it was one of the first foreign companies to aid in establishing the industry and today it does a business larger than any other company in the field with the exception perhaps of the royal dutch shell i have gone over its works which are marvels of efficiency and modern machinery in a land where most of the methods are crude in the extreme it has a force of high-class men and the american colony here at ploesti is a refreshing oasis in this great desert of southwestern europe on the outskirts of the town the company has some thousands of acres on which it has built up a settlement that might be transplanted bodily to the best suburbs of any american city and not be out of place beautiful brick houses of two stories facing well-kept lawns decorated with trees and flowers extend for a mile on each side of a white macadamized roadway not far from the refineries the colony has a good school and a clubhouse tennis courts ball grounds and a large swimming pool filled with the purest spring water every family has a house to itself and the homes are well furnished and equipped with hot and cold water and electric lights the social life of the community is delightful and i find none of the people anxious to leave end of chapter thirty one